Aloha, Mama Donna here with another episode of A Dose of Positivity. And I am so excited to introduce you to our guest today, um, Natalie. I always say your name wrong, so I'm going to have you say it out really good right now. Ready, Natalie? Natalie Forsbauer. Natalie Forsbauer is such a beautiful name, but um, I'm dyslexic, you guys, if I haven't already shared that with you. And sometimes I have a hard time um, spitting out um, different things uh, like that beautiful name. But I am so excited because we have another regenerative health specialist and another um, soil to soul lover. Heart and Soil Magazine is an incredible magazine. If you haven't um, already taken advantage of it and seen an issue of it, we're going to put a link in the chat today so you can all check out her magazine welcome beverly welcome you guys all who just popped in thank you for being here um and before we get started because i know there's several other people who are coming on the call and i don't want you to miss a word of what natalie has to say or a word of what i have to say i wanted to share some things with you hey kayla is in kayla is in the house whoa awesome okay um really great to have you guys coming back every week too we really really appreciate it and thanks for sharing these beautiful doses of positivity with your friends and your family it means the world to us to be able to be brightening so many people's uh lives with these shows and on our facebook group if you're not already a member in our facebook group every day we share daily doses of positivity and our presenters share beautiful things and you too can share anything positive in our facebook feed we are here to up level the world world together. And speaking of up leveling, leveling the world, if you look behind me, you saw last week too, and I forgot to mention it, you'll see the sunflowers. And I don't know if all of you realize this, but it is the national flower of Ukraine. And the sunflowers represent solidarity. And I just want to take this time to really acknowledge the um, and send out so much positive love and energy for the Ukrainian people and for world peace and how fragile, really how fragile our world is. And that the fact that what we're going to be discussing today is a big part of the solutions, S-O-U-L, solutions to the problems, which is taking care of the skin of the Mother Earth, the soil. Without soil, we wouldn't be here. So what I'm going to ask you all to do, if you don't already have your beverages, is to grab one. And I am going to take uh, five minutes. Um, and hi, Andres. Um, thank you for coming, everybody. Um, I am going to just take a minute and read from my favorite book, Living Like the Future Matters, The Evolution of a Soul to Soul Entrepreneur. And what I write about a lot in this, and this is how Natalie and I met each other, um, maybe it's two years now. And when she was just starting her beautiful uh, magazine, and I have the opportunity to publish my articles, um, we, we just connected so much in our past uh, around soil. So um, when I was in my late teens and early 20s, I was roving around um and the whole story is in here until we'll put the link to the book in here um working on different organic farms oh good michaela's here awesome so um this was one of the farms that i worked on um and it was the name of this chapter is called bio biodiversity makes economic sense and when you hear us speaking um, today, our discussion is all around biodiversity on the microbiome of the soil and our gut microbiome are one and the same, really. So with no further ado, this is my experience on this farm. After five months on the Lights Diversified Farm, I gained a greater understanding of business and the environment that I had in college. I was 21 and I had reaped some of my best influential life and business lessons. I learned how biodiversified farming makes sense and dollars and cents. 
and that diversity is essential to sustain life. I found out how much skill and work it takes to get food from the soil to our tables. I learned how to produce sellable products, manage cash flow, budget, leverage assets, and supply and demand. I also learned what it meant to cut lot losses and yet still be profitable. We value and use everything on the farm, including the manure. Let me just skip to one other section of this book. Um, and put in a plug in for manure and how healthy manure is one of the most valuable resources we have on this planet to restore our soil. So, um, this was another experience I had around soil and teaching children. And I know we have some parents on the call today. And it is in the chapter in the book called School Gardens. And I just sit back, take a few shallow breaths and we relax into this. It's beautiful. Inch by inch, row by row, we make a garden grow. My other project for school credits was starting and maintaining one of the first organic school gardens in the country. This was in 1978. Two other other green students joined me on the project. I wrote the curriculum. The lesson plans address the origin of food, nutrition, ecology, and the ecosystems with some economics and politics sprinkled in. Hold on one second. I'm sorry, my PJ, you'll have to edit that out of there. Sorry, guys. My my bio of Natalie just blew away. I got it. My colleagues and I shared ideas with the children about staying healthy and eating real food. We asked the students if they knew about the life that lives beneath their feet. They had no idea that it could take thousands of years to make fertile topsoil. They never thought of soil as a non-renewable resource. The kids agreed we needed to take care of the soil now and stop calling it dirt. It fascinated the children to learn that soil with all its billions of microbes works to break down the biomass. We showed them how we depend on the vital fertile soil for survival. We explained to them how soil is the medium for the food that we eat the timber used to build our homes and the fabric for our clothes. My favorite lesson plan focused on geography. We had a gigantic map of the world in the classroom and on it we pinned where the varieties of foods originated. It blew the children and the teachers away to learn how far most food travels to get to our table. How did that orange get here from Florida or that cocoa from Africa? These lessons help the children learn about the impact of our carbon footprint on the earth. Children and adults, in our hands, one handful of soil has enough microbes of the entire population of earth you can fit in your hand. All that in your hand is how many people. You pick up a handful of soil and that's how much life is in healthy soil. You pick up, pick up a handful of dirt, got nothing. And when we have nothing in our soil, there is nothing for people to eat. So today's conversation with this incredible human, Natalie, I'm so grateful that you're here. I would love to give you guys a proper introduction of her and I'm going to, to read it because it really helps me. Um, and if you guys have questions, 
um, I, I encourage you while we have this regenerative health specialist and soil expert here to ask your questions and also share your brilliance and your knowledge and your wisdom with us on this topic, okay? Thank you. Natalie Forstebauer is a global regenerative health advocate. She's also the founder and the editor-in-chief of Heart and Soil magazine. She is a TEDx speaker, author, organic biodynamic farmer, and a traumatic brain injury survivor. She is passionate about human potential and seeing people live their best lives. Natalie was raised on an organic farm, wow, trained in polarity therapy, alternative medicine, neurofeedback, and transformational leadership. She brings a wealth of knowledge and life experience to our audience. Natalie is also a regenerative health coach, and she helps others improve their health through soil health, and she aligns more deeply with who you are. So if you're looking for a brain upgrade, improve your overall health, you're in the right place. So on this call, we're going to be asking you some questions that you can all think about for yourself, but what is your wellness strategy? What's going well? And what are your challenges? What are you struggling with? And we are gonna be breaking that down and we are gonna be looking at many of those soul solutions are found right beneath our feet. So sweet Natalie, I would like to ask you to come in and just give everybody on the call um, and thank you all here for again for being here and share your your background with us how you became a heart and soil um gal the heart and soil gal that you are thank you donna thank you for holding this incredibly beautiful and powerful space for us to come together in regeneration and in health and in wellness and in positivity. And I deeply appreciate the questions that you just framed, uh, framed us with. And, uh, and I also really deeply appreciate the conversations and connections that you are, mm, that you're birthing for all of us here. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for, thanks for sharing your wisdom through your books and your writing too. It's quite phenomenal. I love reading it. And I love being a part of I love being a part of your circle. Um so that man, I, you know, sometimes I just don't know where to start and I think that um there's a lot of power in that because a lot of the times we expect life to give us a roadmap or we expect health to be a roadmap or we expect uh you know, gardening or growing food to be a roadmap. We, ex we we have these expectations that we want things to go a certain way or they will go a certain way or we want um, it to work out a certain way. And what I love about the uncertainty and sitting in the, the curiosity and wonder of a moment or in the garden or in our health is it really opens us up deeply to what we're learning right now and what's surfacing right now and what doors are opening right now. And so that can be when, when we turn towards our health or that can be when we turn towards our business or when we turn towards our relationship or when we turn towards uh, farming or gardening or um, if we turn towards uh, just nurturing ourselves and I'm going to start off with a quote as well. Uh, I was inspired by Donna reading from her book. And I have a little book here called Health in a Hurry, Simple Solutions for the Time Starved. It was the first book I wrote in 2003. And um, and I in the first chapter is, is, is the, ha the habit of health. And the quote is, love your body and it will produce miracles for you. And if I was to expand on that, I'd say love your body and love the earth and they will produce miracles for you. Um, I was born and raised on an organic vegetable and blueberry farm. And that was probably, that was a huge gift because I got to experience um, 
I got to experience life literally in the soil, you know, dirt or soil under my fingernails, um, earth stained clothes, wind blown hair, always having fresh vegetables and um, fruit at my fingertips. So I was really, really blessed in that way. And at the same time, um, it was kind of all I knew. And it was also when organic and biodynamic food weren't all the rage or regeneration, regenerative farming wasn't all the rage. And so I remember my mom driving from store to store, uh, trying and almost begging stores to take um, and 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 sell the, the, the produce that we were growing from the farm. And um, I remember my heart being so full when she would come back to the car and grab a bag of carrots or grab a bag of cucumbers or a box of beans and bring it into the store. And um, I feel like where we are with, um, where we are at this point of time is, is similar to that in the way we are turning towards growing our own foods and we're turning towards really being conscious about how our foods are grown. And that is really exciting to me. Um, in 20, uh, let's see, in I was 18 years old, so I'm not too sure when that was, but it was about uh, 30 or, or 30, 30 some years ago. And um, my parents had sold their organic farm and they, were moving to a new farm that had been farmed conventionally. And this was really when probably my first uh, deeper awakening was to, towards uh, soil health and soil actually being um, able to heal itself and come alive. So we landed on this new property and um, I'm the oldest of 12, 12 kids. So I was 18 at the time, lots of little brothers and sisters still. And there was this creek that ran along the side of the farm and and um, in our old farm, we had a creek that ran along the side and we always pretended to go fishing with like sticks and and string. And so the first thing I wanted to do was find worms and sticks and string to go and pretend fish with my brothers and sisters in the in the little creek that ran along the side. And we scoured 110 acres for worms and could not find one. We dug along the barns. We turned over all the, um, every kind of piece of wood that we can f could find. We dug in the middle of the fields, along the house, everywhere. And there was not one worm. And what was more strange to me was, um, it was like the earth, the earth was powdery and, and, and kind of almost dusty. And, and there was literally no life in it. And I honestly thought to myself, I wonder if this is what the surface of the moon is like because it was that lifeless Good. yeah it was incredible donna and then over the next few years i got to see the earth come back to life and teeming with like worms and bugs and of course i couldn't see the microbiology but it became this rich um oasis of like when you pick thing when you pick up handfuls of earth it, it had life back in it again and it was amazing to me because before that, I only knew organic farming as, um, you know, something that was supposed to be better for us and supposed to be um, not hurting the earth because I was being taught that chemicals were, would kill everything. And, and, I, and to actually see the earth come back to life was really, really powerful. And when I saw that, I was like, and I'd also, um, I jumped into studying um, alternative medicine and energy medicine, polarity therapy, uh, shortly after that, and I and I and I was like it, and and I could see the parallel between the healing of our ourselves, our human selves, and the and the power of the earth being able to heal itself. And you know, when we cut ourselves, what happens when you get, when you get, when you cut your arm? The body automatically tries to heal heal right and the earth is exactly the same way if we give it what it needs and sometimes just leave alone it finds its way back to being a living breathing um multi-dimensional ecosystem it's really really powerful yes it's so true the faster we take care of a wound the sooner it heals the faster we catch a cold the sooner we're well yeah it's yeah really really amazing yeah. you know what so many people like when you think about the most people in the world they don't have a story like that to tell they don't understand they didn't have that first hand experience of of growing up 
with microbiome rich mm -hmm. soil that you even thought it was dirt because you weren't into it at the time and to really have an awakening to fully appreciate it coming to this 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 earth that was was suffering like so many of our people in the world are suffering right now because they're not being nurtured with the right foods or even love or just support like what we see going on around the world and look sometimes yeah you, you're right you can just love leave leave things alone and maybe they'll heal but i think what what brings me so i'm so inspired by you and and your work is that you put a sense of urgency like the people that are who write in your magazine and mm. and 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 the facts and the the reality of how vulnerable be vulnerable we are because yeah. just like the sooner we take care of a wound the faster it heals the mm -hmm. longer it fested the more infected it gets yeah yeah that's really powerful donna and you know um the part of the story i didn't share and i'll make this really quick is in 2003 i landed with a major brain injury and um, when I, when I, I, and right after the accident, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know uh, my name or that I had just written that little book I showed you called Health in a Hurry, Simple Solutions for the Time Starved. And, um, and that was in 2003. And then I went on quite a healing journey over the next 17 years and really deepened into what healing was really all about. And what I mean by that is, even though I had an extraordinary amount of um, training and uh, had a lot of success with working with people and helping them regain their health and and um, from everything from like um, back pain to um, digestive challenges, um, I, I also really, really believe that um, it, that uh, like, <laughs> not the health was a destination, but if we worked hard enough for what we wanted, we'd get what we wanted. And um, what the brain injury taught me was that true healing is really about embracing who we are, where we are in this very moment. And then as I deepen into what my next steps were, as I, as I healed from the brain injury a couple of years ago, I was uh, in the process of launching a brain health magazine. And then I had this vision of a new earth, which was um it was completely transformed into something new where we uh we built differently we worked together differently we were um in a complete uh, re reciprocal relationship with nature and with people around us and the colors were more vibrant the um everything was was uh flowed and alive and it was so clear that, and this is where the urgency comes in, Mama Donna, is that um, the, the messaging was so clear that the m more important than for, for me and where, what my life had prepared me for than talking about brain health was talking about um, soil health and global regeneration. So expanding beyond ourselves and looking to to uh how like what our what our relationship is with the earth and with nature and how can we deepen into that how can we cultivate habits of health and cultivate cultivate habits of um being mindful of where our food comes from and how our food is grown and cultivating habits of connection and uh inner awareness and um this and deepen is, into you know I deep love this do you hear do you hear the birds i don't know if you guys can hear I the can. bird but like as you're talking the birds are going yes it's <laughs> not only yes i mean seriously you're you're we're including them and 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 i just wanted to to also like when you were saying that that whole connection um something just like totally fired my brain up and like if you look at the brain like on a big like the brain and you look at the mycelium that coats the earth they mm -hmm. look almost identical like artists yeah, portrayed the brain and the mycelium of the earth and mm -hmm. they have it is the brains of the earth right and and if we could just 
make that mm-hmm. connection um it teach our children like in the school gardens which was one of the most honorary things i've ever done in my entire life um teaching our children and teaching them well to understand that brain mycelium connection because the closer yeah. we get to nature the closer we are to our true nature yeah and i, just, oh, I love that andre so sorry love so love that you shared that uh your brain injury story at just that time and then the birds were like freaking natalie you are so right on so anyway let's let's have that in the background we can we can like every time the birds chip in they're listening too so um but um i i also wanted to take this opportunity to tie into what natalie just said to read these shocking statistics to you because this is kind of crazy um at the dawn of agriculture eight to ten thousand bce there was about four million people on earth during the u.s revolutionary war in 1770s to 1780s there was about 800 million people on earth in 1969 when the first man walked on the moon there were about 3.7 billion people on earth 1969. Today, 2022, we are creeping up to 8 billion people. So we've got this mycelium, we've got this brain, that we, we know this connection. So what I'd love to hear you talk about, Natalie, because I know you interview a lot of people in your magazine. It's chock full of great information. Mm -hmm. What do we need, each of us on this call and as as a species on this planet? What are things that you feel we can be doing right now to improve our own personal health and the health of the soil for all these people? Yeah, that's a great question. Donna, I think the first thing is really cultivating the habit of health and cultivating the habit of connecting with where your food comes from and how it's grown. Those are two really, really important pieces to be for your compass to be dialed into because when we're, when that's in our, you know, all it has to be is in our consciousness because as soon as it's in our consciousness, then we're asking questions right and um and then the other piece is um is real asking asking your farmers asking um if if you don't if you live in the city you don't have the opportunity to shop at farmers and there's no farmers markets around you or if you live in a small town like i do um where there might be not very many market gardeners around it, and uh, you only have the grocery store to go to is asking the grocery store um, where they're getting their produce. And if you know um, of local farmers who sell uh, to, who sell, asking them to get local foods in. Because at one, once upon a time, even big stores used to carry local produce and it's gotten really more difficult for them to um, carry local products. But there are big, um, uh, like grocery stores and smaller grocery stores that when you ask for the local produce then when enough people ask for it it starts to come in so really being mindful about cultivating that habit of health and that habit of being conscious of where your food comes from and growing your own food whenever you can even if it's uh making your own sprouts or growing your own microgreens or um planting some herbs outside that those are some really nice places to start I love the idea of sprouts and microgreens because even if you live in an apartment in Manhattan or in the Philippines, wherever you are, you are um, in charge of the most nutrient dense source of food with microgreens and sprouts and you can actually live off of it. And it's about time we start starving the corporations and feeding our gut microbiome because it's those major corporations that are, are depleting our soils and tilling them and raping the earth. And so um i think that's what i love most about what you're sharing in your magazine and what you're doing is you're bringing people to those sources of of how how they can have access to that it's like there's food sovereignty well we're looking at just basic life sovereignty right now Mm -hmm. we're looking at um 
Yeah, there's so many good chat global. The global brain. I absolutely yeah, I love, love that. that. I just love that. I mean, that's the name of my next book. Uh, we'll have to co-write it, okay, Andre? Um, yeah, and they're feeding us, and not only they're feeding empty calories, they're feeding us toxins. They're putting That's fluoride right. in the water and they're putting toxins in our food. And the thing that is is on in addition to that is, is broadening the look of our agricultural system and the packaging processed foods and the agricultural lands and the natural landscapes that are being completely annihilated for cardboard boxes mm. and fields of oil and fields. They're farming oil. Okay, this fossil fuel that is basically putting so much carbon into the air right now that the soil is so sick, it can't sequester fast enough. But mm -hmm. it can. I mean, we're talking about how many people there are, right? But it can, right, if we all start yeah. taking control of what we put in our mouths, on our bodies. And mm -hmm. and um, one, well, my husband and I like to say we are a one light bulb family. Turn the lights mm -hmm. on. You know, mm -hmm. the, it's about preservation and conservation. It really is. So Natalie, can, just share with us really how, you know, give us a little bit more about the the guts of the soil and also the how it related to your that your your whole microbiome story mm -hmm. and how you how you got healthy and how you healed mm -hmm. your brain. Your brain yeah. injury. That's what what you went through, a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't be talking right now. And you yeah. like an inspiration. Yeah, thanks, Donna. Um, you know, there's so many layers to healing from a brain injury, I think. And um, and so I just want to hold a lot of tenderness around that because you can do all the right things and still um really, really struggle when you've had a brain injury or a concussion. So I really want to hold that space for people. And um it, you know, it, it's interesting because I was in really good health before the brain injury, before the accident, like really, really good health. And, um, you know, like had done testing and, you know, like what herbs and vitamins do you need to take? And it's like, actually, you don't need any. That's really weird. That kind of good health. And, um, and then within a few years of having the brain injury, I was noticing I was getting stomach aches from, um, eating kale and stomach aches from eating lettuce. And it was very alarming to me. And what I learned was, and I, and I was eating mostly organic food. I was eating a very, very high, uh, like very good diet. But what I learned was um, when a person has a brain injury, um, it actually can impact their, their gut biome. And so it, it almost doesn't matter how well you're eating sometimes. If you don't have a healthy gut biome, then um, your body's gonna struggle, right? You're not going to be able to get the nourishment from your food that you you get so or that you need so i went on a journey of really building up my gut biome so i did a bit of an elimination diet and i really became more mindful of eating foods that were easy to digest and eating um adding things to my diet like polarity tea which is a combination of peppermint and fenugreek and uh fennel and and licorice root and um, adding, being more attentional about adding ginger and ginger tea to my diet because those are really nourishing uh, foods, and um, and really being more mindful about um, making sure that all the food that I ate was coming from organic and regenerative farms and. Being in Saskatchewan, where I live, that can be really, really hard because, uh, you know, um, I, I never quite understood uh, organic food being a privilege and, and, and because I grew up around it. And my mindset was that we can grow, own, people can grow, grow their own food, but when a person doesn't know how to grow their own food and, um, and or they live in a community where you actually can't get organic food, then it, it, it becomes really, really challenging. So growing our own food is one of the most powerful and um, powerful things that you can you can do for yourself. And I know I'm circling back to that a few times, Donna, but really it's um, when you can grow your own food, you it doesn't matter what happens for you or around you. You have agency and you have um, a tool that can carry you 
through almost anything. I love that. I mean, it's a good thing to keep coming back because it's a really important reminder. And there's our bird again, who is a green. And the other thing is managing our food supply. Like a moose doesn't go through and plow through a field. It nips the buds and comes back around when the buds are ready to eat again. It, it mm -hmm. knows that if it eats too much, it, it will kill the plant. Mm -hmm. And just many birds, birds, all, all animals know that, but that's just because I lived in Alaska for so many years, you know, and just noticing how to manage that. And yeah. It comes back to me when when we're getting back to, you know, a handful of soil. Hold, mm -hmm. we, we, it used to be a teaspoon of of soil to hold mm -hmm. all, on the world, and and before that it was a, a pinky tip mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that could do that, right? Mm -hmm. But so we've got this overabundance of humans, and it's almost like a bad bacteria. Like when you have, like you were talking about the microbiome, having an overabundance of bad microbiome in, in mm -hmm. your gut. And mm -hmm. so we're coming back to the words conservation and preservation. And how do we, how do we manage, um, how do we manage this? So people, we have more um, sanity and more equal distribution of the wealth and the abundance that I have here growing you know, right here, you know, there's thousands, yeah. Of, thousands. Yeah, you're so blessed. Of, thousands um, of pounds. And so getting that distribution of this abundance it, it, is, is, a, is a real challenge, I think. Yeah. Donna, I, I just want to answer this question to explain what the difference between a regenerative and organic farm. I love this question. I'm just going to turn my light on here because it's getting dark really quickly. Yeah. Um, where I am, so that might be the lighting might be a bit better there. Oh, yeah. Um, so oh man, I'm so passionate about this question because here's the thing um, I love regenerative farming, I am deeply aligned with regenerative farming. I, uh, you know, I think it's one of the most powerful resort like powerful mindsets and resources that we have going for us and um at the same time i i'm going to get to the explanation of what the difference is in just a second here um i'm really um one of the reasons i started heart and soul magazine is because growing up in the space of organic farming and biodynamics and a lot of different ways of of farming when regenerative farming started to come out, there started to be a lot of, um, I, it felt like there was a lot of divisiveness happening in the different communities. And so what I mean by that is, um, there's always, you know, my way is better than this way and that's better than the other thing. And then when, as regenerative farming was emerging, organic farming was being thrown under the bus. And I can tell you, I grew up on an organic farm and um, it was regenerative. When my parents, when, when we first, um, when the grassroots organic farmers, the reason organic certifications and verifications were first formed is because um, there was no way to differentiate what people call conventional farming or, or farming with chemicals from organic farming. So organic farmers really wanted to um, help uh, protect and helped, help um, consumers and other farmers have a guide to what is expected of them to grow organic, fo organic food. So that meant, you know, not using any chemical, chemical and synthetic fertilizers and, and pesticides and um, there, I mean, there's a long list of, of different things not to use. So um, one of the differences between regenerative, okay, so first of all, regenerative far organic farming is regenerative at the grassroots. And people will say it's not, um, and that regenerative farming is better. And I actually um, agree and disagree. I disagree because in regenerative farming, people are still sometimes using chemicals like um, glyphosate. So 
no GMO is really big and really popular. Um, and at the same time, they're still feeding their animals, their pasture raised beautiful animals. Um, really? Grains that have been sprayed with glyphosate. And we all know that glyphosate is like, it's killing our bacteria, bacteria and our microbes, right? It's killing the soil, it's killing everything. And, um, and at the same time, not all regenerative farmers are using um, <clears throat> chemicals and glyphosate. So I also want to be mindful of that. What's more important though, and this is why I started Heart and Soul Magazine, is to bridge the conversation, to shine the light on all the great things that people are doing. And instead of throwing um, all throwing organics under the bus or regenerative under the bus or biodynamics under the bus for what they're not doing right or what uh, they're doing better. It's what are we doing really, really well in all these different spaces? Because yeah. there's a lot to glean from. So in organics, maybe um, there's big corporate farms now. There, there wasn't big corporate farms when we first started out with organic farming. I can tell you that for sure. And so people think organics is being hijacked. Well, there was a study done tonight and I wish I knew which study, but um, there's, I think it was like nine, 97%, I think it was of um, organic farms, organic food, boy, I better not quote this. Anyways, my point being is um, there's always going to be people in this space that aren't transparent, right? Whether it be organic or regenerative or biodynamic or you know even your your um your doctor your your friend who you work with but what we have to put our our trust in is 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 where is who is transparent and that the greater good the greater the greater company of organics and the greater company of biodynamics the greater company of korean natural farming the greater company of regenerative farmers really are doing the best they can with what they know with where they're at and that's, I think, the more important conversation is is what we are doing really, really well than pulling apart the parts that we aren't. So um, with organic certification, uh, biodynamic certification, there are verification bodies. And it's really, really hard in some ways to, like there's a lot of benchmarks that people have to meet to be um, certified organic and certified biodynamic. And with regenerative farming, there aren't, certifications there's some that are emerging and there's eov there's um uh some other ones which are great because they're all about building um soil health and soil biology and at the same time just being really mindful of um of the deeper questions that we can be asking of, of um of our farmers so i don't know if that's help is that answer your question andre that was kind of a big <laughs> that was a big answer <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a good answer. And, you know, I think now's the time to really focus in on uh, biodiversity, the mindset, mm -hmm. biodiversity, the mindset of accepting all the organisms, whether it's a cockroach or a gazelle. Yeah. Place and the, the thing also just like even the yin and the yang, there's always gonna be that good and the evil. And even in our gut microbiome, they say you want the 80-20 rule, you want 20 of that bad bacteria so that you stay strong. You know, you keep, you know, your bare arms. I That's my new thing lately. You know, we gotta all take up arms, bare arms. We gotta get strong, not, yeah. not with weapons, but our arms, we gotta start taking to the soil, start taking our lives um, more genuinely and to to what is real and, and here we are even on a zoom call but in in one of the things i do with my clients and stuff is just like go we got to go on digital digital fast and get our hands in soil and um yes. it's so important um rather than breaking apart like the, the like what has happened to us as a species of people that we have to micromanage whether it's organic, sustainable, regenerative, and get caught up on this kind of minutia. There isn't time for that. And that's kind of like the urgency of, you know, a dose of positivity it's about. It's like, wow, how can we empower you each and every day to, to make these decisions each and every single day of your life, whether it's at the grocery store or rinsing your sprouts, and being part of that solution and, and and you know you go to the store and you you'll you know one of the things to me that and and i know you'll agree with this natalie that is super important is 
um, you know, the whole certification of we're going down that road when you're looking at fair trade. And, and I don't know if everybody on the call knows this, but in 1992, I came out with the first organic cocoa and chocolate syrup in the nation. I went national with this organic cocoa and chocolate syrup company because I was exposing the unfair labor laws that were happening in these third world countries that were getting their cultures were being completely decimated their health destroyed their landscapes visually and and physically scarred there was nothing fair trade and cocoa sugar and vanilla are three in, in, in next to cotton and corn are some of the most destructive crops that you can put in the ground mm -hmm. And here I was coming out with this product, not because I wanted to make money, because I wanted to make a difference. There was no fair trade out there at the time. Organic certification wasn't a government thing at the time. These organizations were fighting like like you were just talking about. Well, hey, whoa, 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 just a second. I just need to cut you off because it's not organizations. I mean, sometimes it is. It's I'm hearing, I'm hearing it from 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 other farmers and from other um you know some people in in, in business businesses like businesses who are making a regenerative product yes. or farmers who are growing something regeneratively and i mean it happens it happens both ways so there is there is some greenwashing of um you know big corporations uh claiming um regenerative regen the regenerative space as well and the organic space and at the same time it's it's happening at all levels so it's being mindful of of um of that of that as well donna so i just want to make sure that um i didn't misspoke there no you didn't at all and it and it and it's that's even makes it even sadder that it's amongst the the farmers when really when we look at these beautiful sunflowers behind me how we started this conversation in solidarity mm -hmm. is coming together as a people and one of the things that i learned about the ukrainian people that's so beautiful most of them a, a lot of them live a, a, a vegan lifestyle and they're just gardeners and they grow these gorgeous flowers i don't know if you guys have seen any of the beautiful headdresses and things they make but it's just really honoring um they're much more honored honoring of the earth, which brings me to the indigenous people. And mm. I just wanted to, to, to read you this one quote by Warren Wilson, because this is gonna kind of tie things back and then it, we're gonna wrap up this conversation. Natalie, I really wanna, ha I have a couple more questions for you, but I this was a good time to bring this in. This is Orrin Lyons. He's from the, um, again, Horde Lusa, tribe it's a long name he's still alive he's an elder in his 90s and this is one of the quotes and he's i quote him a couple times in this book but i think this is kind of cut encapsulates everything this dissension the laws say if you poison the water you'll die the laws say that if you poison the air you'll suffer. The law says, if you degrade where you live, you suffer. If you don't learn that, you can only suffer. There's no discussion with the law. So this kind of comes back to everything you were just talking about, um, about the like these laws, we, we, we have these organic laws of qualifications or whatever they are, mm -hmm. but really this is what we have to get across to our children. The, the laws of nature, the systems and cycles of nature and, and starting and, and who's better to teach us teach than you and all of us on the call if we know this stuff to be true mm -hmm. and how do we implement this into our curriculums at schools how do we teach urban people who are living in really really um impoverished situations to vertical farm in, in empty vacant buildings how do we um make this to me, this is the most important thing we can do right now 
This is the most important solution to save mm -hmm. our humanity is to save the soil mm -hmm. for all life kind. And mm -hmm. it's not just about eating food. It's not just about sequestering carbon. It's not just about having enough resources to, to warm our homes and everything comes from the soil and the sea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And laws, like when you think about, okay, we got the Fair Trade Organization, Organized, Organ Association over here, and we got the Regenerative Farmers over here. Who has time to dispute? Like, I like the, and, and, and we put a link in, in the chat, you guys can check it out about the indigenous people who live so much closer and in harmony with the systems and cycles of nature. Yeah. Some of our greatest teachers are our four-legged friends mm -hmm. and our birds and our indigenous people. And where you live in, you know, your whole area, I mean, you're, you're in a, a hub of in Saskatchewan. I mean, the, the, the cultural diversity there is outstanding. I mean, do you do you see where I'm heading with this? Like, is anybody here on this call or listening to this replay aware of how separate we have become and how a simple thing, like how we started this discussion, Natalie going to a moving from a vibrant organic organic farm to literally dead earth and in a matter of she said a few years was able to they were able to regenerate that soil a hundred percent it was amazing i don't know if any of you have experienced that before but it really was one of the most amazing things i've ever witnessed and you know when you're doing things, I'll say, right, <laughs> you can even regenerate it more quickly. And so um, with, with the right microbes and the right, and microbes coming from compost and compost extracts and biodynamic preparations and, um, and mulching and cover crops. And, and you can do that in your backyard. You can do that in your front yard. You can do that um, with even the plants that you're growing in your house. Mm -hmm. No, I love that you bring that having in your house. Like that is something that it, every home, like for me, I live outside obviously, but um, <laughs> you know, I even have plants in my house too, like my basil plants if I want for cooking and stuff like that. But having, um, and in my book, Conscious Cures, I give uh, 33 cures things to do. And one of the main things is growing, having that, that microbiome in your house, having the soil soil in your house sequestering and cleaning and filtering the air in your own home and, it, and then plucking some parsley and getting all those um that chlorophyll and all the nutrients right there i mean it's so empowering and it's it's better than any vitamin pill you'll ever you'll ever have yeah, yeah and i think um just to answer Anne's question about uh, biodiversity if we're talking about enhancing the soil by creating various um, guild types and mixing fruits, veggies and fruits together and adding natural amendments like carbons, nitrogens and fungus to feed them, right? Um, you're talking about the soil, I'm guessing from that question. And so, yeah, we're talking about composting, putting compost extracts back into the soil to build the microbiology and the diversity in the soil. And, you know, this is really important when we're talking about compost and um, to be really, really clear, compost is like vitamins. It's a mm -hmm. supplement. It's it's a mineral. Um, you know, like if you were taking your supplements in the morning, that's really what compost is. And compost is fabulous because we need those micronutrients that we may not be able to get. But actually, soil and soil structure. And when you see what's happening in the Sierra deserts and even in the Dead Sea, and it's drying up and the ecosystems changing, what's actually happening to the physio biological structure of the soil is really a challenge right now. And that's why climate change is um, and, and why our, our relationship to how we view everything and making a difference is it is we we can't really imagine 
living without soil. I mean, you could. Yeah. And like someone earlier said, oh, they're growing our food in the lab now. Um, yeah, that's frightening. I just want to dovetail on that, Adana, and, and just really encourage you all to notice that even even the small little things that you do. So for example, if you're not able to, um, if you don't have access to very much organic food or that's something that you not don't feel like you have, you're able to do, even a little bit helps because when a million people buy one pound of organic apples, that's a million pounds of organic apples yeah. that have been purchased. And that is if impacting acres and acres and acres of land. And it's being shown like Donna's talking about is, um, we can actually the amount that we can impact climate uh climate change as they call it or climate um, crisis the climate crisis climate crisis is profound and not just that but also the impact that it has on your gut biology you're adding billions of microbes to your body when you're when you're consuming and when you're eating those healthy organically and biodynamically grown and regeneratively grown foods. You know, I love that you mentioned building immune, sorry, yeah. building your immunity as well. Yes. Unity in our community builds our immunity yeah. and all these shows are all about building our immune system and the immune system of our spirits and our soul. And you have brought so much juicy, good stuff, but you mentioned something about apple trees. And I just love that because, you know, all it takes is one apple seed. This is how, 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 how easy and how fast we can change things around. But one apple seed produces an apple tree mm -hmm. and that apple tree can produce up to 800 pounds of apples a year for 30 to sometimes 70 and 80 years, depending on the variety of the apple seed of the apples. And each one of those apples has multiple seeds in it. So, when we think of that just as a metaphor of just thinking when next time you bite into an apple and you think of the power of the seed and and putting it in healthy soil and just the impact you can have maybe it's not an apple seed that you plant but any kind of seeds of change like that and and sharing that wealth and that abundance that's how future generations are going to thrive that's how we feel mm -hmm. like we're leaving a legacy in that apple tree right long after we're gone you don't plant the seed who's going to remember yeah. what will happen. so we're all planting seeds of change right now we're all having this this discussion that just is so rich and so so micro micro biologically rich micro biome explosive yes, yes in our back to our brains let's yeah. wrap our brains around this let's wrap our brains about how our brains are like the mycelium of the soil and just the energy that we're shared here today and that natalie has brought to our attention i am forever grateful and i'd like to take these last couple of minutes natalie for you if you wouldn't mind even dropping your uh you were going to maybe do a complimentary uh, issue of your magazine or some article of your magazine. I, I'd love everybody who's either listening to the replay or on the call now to see uh, the incredible connection, what you're doing. Your, your, your magazine is like the brain, you know, it's connecting mm -hmm. everything from diversity to biodiversity, to the soil, to the compost. Um, and she interview some really interesting farmers and um it's 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 a brilliant it's it, there's nothing like it out there i mean it's like not like it's like the rodale press of the future the way you do it. <laughs> it's super Thanks, cool. it's, yeah thank you it really is a good publication that our contributors are next level and we're actually just um a launching a membership site with the magazine so it used to be that when you subscribe to the magazine, you get the current issue and all the issues that come after it. And we're setting it up so you get the current issue and all the back issues and all the issues that come up. So it's a really, really good, it's a really, really good um, deal. Opportunity. It's a very good deal. Yeah. And you'll get, to yeah. read, you'll get to see my green bean recipe in there in my article on one bite at a time. 
Yeah. And, and I am so, so honored to have you here. I'm so proud of you for what you're doing and how you're, you're, you're part of that mycelium connecting all these, re, getting the uh, arguments or the, the clearing up the waves of regenerative and organic and just bringing so much more love and humus and humanity and humanness to raising our food and raising our consciousness. So from the soil to the soul, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you so much, Natalie, from Heart and Soil Magazine for coming and sharing your wisdom. And we look forward to having you back again. Big, thank big love. You. Thank you. Big, big love to you. And um, yeah, if you use that link there, I'll make sure you get a complimentary issue of Heart and Soul Magazine. And um and, uh, and anytime you have any questions or you have somebody who you really would like to see in the magazine or you just want to reach out and connect, I'm always I'm just at the other end of the phone or at the other end of an email. I love connecting with our community and with Donna's community and with people who um, are just hungry to learn and have and want to share their story. So awesome. Thank you so much again.